Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. This is a gear, but not just any gear. This is a bronze herringbone gear. These are notoriously hard to make, but I was able to make this easily, quickly, with minimal skill, and cheaply. And I'm gonna show you how to do it too. Basically, anything that you can 3D print, you can reproduce in metal at home. Let me say that again. Anything you can 3D print, you can reproduce in metal. I'm talking about bronze, brass, copper, aluminum, even cast iron. This is an amazingly powerful technique. What I'm talking about is lost PLA casting. PLA is the thermoplastic that is commonly used for 3D printing. It's polylactic acid. I'm gonna take you through the whole process in this video, show you everything you need to know and all the equipment that you're gonna need. So to start out with, this is called a loop pole, and this would attach like on a door or a hatch or something on a boat, and it would allow you to then pull that open. It's my parents' old wooden boat, and uh, this broke, and they couldn't find a place that they could buy bronze ones. They found them in stainless steel, but that wouldn't match the boat. So they asked me if I could make a bronze one, and I thought that would be a, a perfect time to, to use this technique. Now this part could be made in a lot of ways, but it's not the simplest of parts. And I'm just talking about this piece here. It has an angle on it to help you hook your finger. Now, how could you make that? There's several options. You could get some quarter inch bronze. You could cut out the shape, drill a hole, and file it. That would take you some time, and have you priced bronze lately? That would be pretty expensive. You could use some bronze tubing, and basically on a lathe, you could, you could make the round part, and then you could braze on this tab, uh, and that would work fine. You could probably even get the brazing to match well enough that it wouldn't be that obvious. Uh, and you could sand cast it. To be fair, this would be a relatively easy part to sand cast. You'd have to add some draft and then do some filing at the end. But we're gonna make this with lost PLA. So I'm using Fusion 360 to make this part. Now, if the part that you wanna make already exists, you can just download it on the internet and you don't have to do any of this, uh, this designing. Um, but Fusion 360 is free and it's not it's not too hard to learn. Basically you sketch out the the outline and then you extrude it and here I'm adding some angles to the edges and then I go underneath and I add that angle to make it easy to hook with your finger and there you go. I send it over to my 3D printer. Mine is a Creality CR10. So there you go, I've got it suspended in a cup and I left this end long, that's going to be the pour spout and the idea is that I'm going to put plaster all around that and let it set in place Then I'm going to burn the pattern out then we're going to fill it full of bronze. Now it's certainly possible that there's air bubbles and that's not going to be a great mold, but I don't know. It's pretty fluid right now and it, you know, I was pounding it down. I think maybe that'll work and if that's going to work, you know, good enough is good enough. There's no reason to make it harder than it needs to be. So we'll give that a try. This is just in a little electric tabletop furnace. First I'm going to dry out the mold. Uh, I'm just going to do this at 100 C for a couple hours. I'm going to go ahead and invert it uh, over this pan because as I raise the temperature the, the plastic's going to start dripping out. I've been at around 240 for the last few hours. Uh, that's Fahrenheit. So that should have driven off all the water in the mold. So we are going to go up to 450 degrees now. All right, it's been at 450 for several hours now. Nothing really exciting to see in there. So we are going to take it up now. Uh, I'm going to go actually just take it up to 1200. So I may have messed it up. When I cranked it up to 1200, it might have been too fast. There, you can see how cracked up it is but the cracks don't look like they're penetrating all the way to the center. Um, it's such a small, simple part. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try and pour it. So here's some bronze. It's actually from their boat. 
uh, some bronze from a piece of trim or something that they replaced. So let's put that in the crucible and we'll start heating that up. Try and give this a pour. And I have to be fast because it's such a small amount of metal I know it's going to cool very quickly. through the plaster. That's all right. Doesn't always work the first time. Lesson learned. I poured it in the top there, but it all just came out the bottom. You can see where the metal just poured out of the side. It's surprising. I had part of my ring. At least I made something. <laughs> the tape keeps this from pushing it down too far. Uh, but then that's enough weight to just keep it right where it is, so that looks good. And it cracked too. That's frustrating. I have no idea why that cracked. What I'm thinking is maybe I need to do like a soup can, a steel can around it so that I can do the burnout with the plaster supported. I'm not sure if that's the best solution though. So you notice there was no pour spout on there. That's because I completed the burnout and you're supposed to keep it hot when you're pouring. The pour temperature for the mold is 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. The burnout temperature was around 1300. So once I finished the burnout, I just turned it down to 1100, melted my metal and poured it in. Well, that didn't give me a chance to do anything to the mold to make a nice little pour spout. I suppose I could 3D print something into the pattern. I have a feeling it actually didn't go down into the cavity. Now, if I was Big Stack D, I'd have a giant block of ice. He seems to have an endless supply of those to cool this off. But I'm just a farmer, so we're going to use uh, the bucket for a protein pail. So if you guys haven't seen Big Stack D and you like watching uh, Melting Metal, you should check him out. He makes uh, Melting Metal fun. Hey, look at that! It's in the bottom of the mold. Did it fill? Ha! That's freaking awesome! Can't believe that worked. Can you see the lines in it? You can actually see the 3D printing lines. Like that thing got really, really detailed.
A common question I get is why don't you just use the item that you're trying to reproduce to make your mold? And, and this actually makes that example. The answer is here was my mold and here's my result. This is bigger than this. Even if I hadn't filed or sanded or anything, it was significantly smaller and that's because the molten metal is this size as it's molten, but then when it cools, it shrinks. So you end up with a smaller part than your original. So you have to take that into account when you're making your pattern. Uh, how much additional do you need? You know, if you wanted it to be exactly this in final dimensions, you're going to need to add enough for shrinking and then also enough for finishing. You know, you're going to be able to want to sand it and smooth it and make it look, look right. I just put a cotter pin through there and there you have it. That measures 1.457. This is... 1.49 35 thousandths difference this is bigger than this bronze is real easy to patina i boiled an egg crushed it up and put it in a bag with this in there and that's the patina it gave it so there you go there's your loop pull so that was kind of cool. Admittedly, not the coolest thing in the world because that could have been made um, just with sand casting. Uh, let's make something cooler. This is a herringbone gear. So it's a combination helical gear. A helical gear, meaning the teeth are at an angle, gives you advantages in that it can run faster, it can handle higher loads than just a straight tooth gear. But the problem with a helical gear is you know, if the teeth are all in one direction and you're driving it this way, well, that's going to create a force in one direction. So there's thrust on a helical gear that you have to have to deal with. Well, this design gets rid of that problem because there's the angles are in both directions. These are very hard to make. Look at that. How do you make that? How would you sand cast that? Well, you can't cast it. You can't sand cast it like it is. You could split it in two and do two halves. Uh, and generally that's how they're done. Uh, you make the two halves and then you bolt them together. But even if you picture just the bottom half there, even removing that from the sand, you would have to unscrew it from the sand. You would have to pull it at that angle. These are challenging to make, but with this method, it should be a piece of cake. So let's give it a try. I've printed a pour spout. I'm gonna fill the plaster up to there. So basically I'm gonna hot glue it like that. And this is gonna hold it in position while the plaster's setting. Four hundred grams of powder to one hundred and sixty grams of water. This one, I'm going to put the plaster in first. This is just an old ceramic kiln. I got this on Craigslist. I think I spent it was either a hundred or hundred and fifty bucks. I put some insulation on it. It probably wasn't necessary, but I had it just to uh, just to make it more um, efficient. This has a ramp and soak function, which means you can program it to set a temperature and then slowly increase to another temperature and then hold it level at that temperature and then go up some more, which is exactly what I need to do with this. So that's going to make cooking off automatic. Basically, I put it in, I hit go, and I walk away, come back 12 hours later, and it'll be, it'll have done all the work for me. So for not much money, you can look around on Craigslist. These things are, uh, are very plentiful and super useful. All right, so I'm ready to do the burnout. So here's my mold. Setting it on something so that the gases have room to get out. I don't want to just set it flat on the bottom. So that's going to follow the recommended burnout cycle for this plaster, which is this Prestige Oro. You can see in the first hour it goes up to 300. It holds that for three hours. Then over another hour it goes to 700, holds that for two. Over two hours it goes all the way up to 1382 Fahrenheit and holds that for four. And then comes down to 1100 degrees as a poor temperature. There you go, that's how much bronze I'm going to melt. And that should be more than enough, far more than I need to do these two molds.
So a couple interesting things here. I poured the small gear first and it came out really nice. You know, good filling of the mold on both sides, top and bottom. Uh, the bottom might be a little sharper than the top, like those are a little bit blunted. That's probably because of air pushing back, not allowing the metal to completely fill the mold. Now I could maybe help that if I put a riser, a pour spout and a riser to allow the air to escape. Commercially you would use a vacuum pump. You basically, when you're pouring, you have on the bottom of your mold a suction so that it actually pulls the metal into the mold and pulls the air out, making it easier to fill the mold. But I'm real pleased with that, especially considering I didn't even vacuum. Now, the bigger one I poured second, and you can see I have much more blunting at the tops. So this one had trouble filling the mold uh, more than that one did. I think the metal was probably cooling off. Because of that, it was freezing and, and not pushing the air out like it did on this one. Maybe I could have worked a little faster. Now, here's an interesting thing. I had some air bubbles. Now, those were in the mold. Those were in the plaster. Looks like you could just scrape those right off, but they're they're cast in there. They're not going anywhere. And there you can see the blunting on the top of the teeth. And the smaller gear, no air bubbles. And the teeth are sharper. Little blunt on top. Overall though, these would be uh, expensive parts if you needed one. So let's talk equipment. This is my 3D printer. Um, it's a Creality CR10, uh, and it's a it's got a pretty big capacity on it. It's a it's a pretty nice printer. Printers are getting cheaper and cheaper. You can get a printer on Amazon right now, brand new for 150 bucks. But people are always upgrading their printers too. So if you want a printer and you look around for used, you're probably going to be able to get a, a certainly a decent printer for 100. dollars This ceramic kiln with a little effort. And if you're patient, I think you'll be able to find one of these on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for a hundred bucks. Um, they'll probably list it for more, but I bet you'd be able to get it for that. This controller for doing burnouts is awesome. It's 75 bucks. I wish I could say it was cheaper, but man, it's so worth it. You'll also need a solid state relay. Uh, I'll, I'll leave links to all that in the description. So now you need a way to melt your metal. I was using this little furnace. Um, this was $500. It's nice. I got it because I wanted to be able to very precisely control temperatures and very easily do small melts. Uh, and it just makes it so easy when it's electric. Um, I can just set the, the temperature to 2000 and off it goes. And the crucible is this crucible. It's not a it's not a lot of material, but it's quite it's quite a, a bit and it takes about half hour to melt it. I can put it in and just walk away. It, it is very convenient. I've got a video on making this furnace. This is a metal five gallon bucket with some uh, kale wool ceramic insulation and I used a Harbor Freight weed torch as the burner and I used that for a long time. I was able to melt up to copper, which is 2000 degrees. That is certainly an option and uh, probably the cheapest one you're going to have on melting metal. Uh, and if you want a nicer furnace, I've also got a, a video on building this big guy. There's a, there's Satanite coating in there and, uh, <laughs> and a giant crucible. Um, and then speaking of that, crucibles, uh, that crucible that was in there is probably an $80 crucible. This one was probably 15, 25, and then 60 or something like that. All depends on what size furnace you have, what size crucible you're going to need. While well, you can use a furnace like this to do both the pattern burnout as well as melting the metal, there's not a lot of room in there and doing them at the same time obviously is troublesome because the temperatures are different. It's really nice to have two furnaces, one for the pattern and then one for the metal. So for a bare minimum price list, the printer would be $100. The electric kiln with controller would be $200. The basic furnace would be $100. A crucible would be $25. And the plaster is $50. That is 25 pounds of plaster. That would be enough to do about 25 soup can type molds. 
So I know people are going to say, uh, you know, hey, that's not cheap. That's $500 or even up to $1,000. Um, well, I guess it's all relative. This is my mill right here. That was $2,500. So just the mill costs a heck of a lot more than what you would need uh, to do what I'm what I'm talking about here. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying this stuff's free. You're not going to go to a junkyard and be doing this, but um, it's certainly doable. So I have some ideas of some interesting things I could make using this technique, but I'm curious what you guys are thinking. Can you think of anything you'd like to see me make? Post a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. I also want to mention that I've been approached several times by companies uh, to put ads in my videos, and I really hate ads in videos. Um, so I have uh, I have not done that. I want to really thank my Patreon supporters for supporting me. They really help making it so that I don't have to turn to ads and things like that. So uh, if you guys are appreciative of the content, if you learned something with the video and you want to help the channel, you can join me on Patreon. It would be awesome. Uh, you can also just share and like the video. That would be really helpful. I hope you guys learned something useful. We'll see you next time.